Shanette Olson with me as well. Uh, the other teacher that could not be present this evening is Stephanie Ellis. We all three attended a workshop this summer. Uh, I use that word workshop very loosely because this basically was a professional development transforming um, workshop that we attended. Um, it was Great Expectations. Uh, Great Expectations is very um, profound for, no, uh, for using uh, quotes. So I'm going to start off with uh, this very first quote. Vision without action is merely a dream. Action without vision just passes the time. Vision coupled with action can change the world. So I'm going to say to you before I go any further that I know as a parent, you raise your children to go out and change the world. And as a teacher, that's my job as well. Not only for my own, my own personal children, but for the children in my classroom to change the world. That's my job is to educate them to change the world. The mission for Great Expectation is uh, to motivate, inspire, challenge individuals to achieve excellence in learning as well as in living. So I want you to remember the latter part, the living part, because we're going to get to that in, in just a few minutes. Um, Great Expectations is not just about books. It's not just about smart boards. It's not just about um, what can I do in my classroom, but it's extending it beyond the classroom into your community. And I know as a school board um, member um, that that's one of, your, one of your objectives is how can we get these kids prepared to move on from classroom to classroom and enter into our society, enter into our community, and be productive. So now that you know the mission, you may be wondering to yourself, okay, well, what is Great Expectations? Great Expectations is scientifically based uh, professional development model focused on bringing major change and innovation to public school classrooms. Uh, the University of Oklahoma and Southwest Educational Development Laboratory in Texas are both facilities that have researched and studied and evaluated this program, and they have both proven to be um, effective. They have shown it to be effective. The research shows it to be effective in the classroom and beyond the classroom. That's what Great Expectation is. It is based on proven best practices in teaching and the criteria of No Child Left Behind Act. So those, that's the criteria that they use to design uh, their great expectations. Great expectation dramatically reduces uh, discipline problems in the classroom. And I'm going to share an example with you in just a second. It energizes teachers and it improves test scores. They've proven that with their research. It improves test scores. Uh, the GE professional development model is guided by the six tenets or our beliefs. But I want to stop for just a second. Um, when I tell you that it has um, reduces the discipline problems, um, I've already experienced by implementing the program into my classroom, and I don't have it perfected. I'm just now starting the program. I'm doing a little bit at a time because that's how they teach you to do it. I've already encountered one discipline problem in my classroom, um, and I've addressed it with that child. Uh, the child and I have conferenced. I've sent the child back to the teacher that he disrespected. I have a whole new kid. I did not have to raise my voice. I did not have to belittle that child. I did not have to reduce that child to tears. We simply had an eye-to-eye, person-to-person, human-being-to-human-being conversation. And I had a different kid in my classroom. One time. One time. Um, moving on. Uh, the, the six basic tenets, and tenets is beliefs. That's the belief system behind great expectation. Number one, all children can learn. Not half your kids. Not three-fourths of your kids. Every single child in the classroom can learn. Every single child in our community can learn. Um, we believe in building self-esteem, not just in ourselves as the teacher, not just in the sum of the students, but in every single student we need to build self-esteem. And they taught us and educated us at this uh, uh, development uh, conference that the majority of our students have extremely low self-esteem. We do not have a society of well-managed self-esteem students. We don't. They're low self-esteem kids. Um, we promote climate of mutual respect. I respect you, you respect me. You give me respect and I give it right back. It's a two-way street, but I'm not going to just expect that of you. I'm going to teach you how to do that. Not only in our classroom, but in other places in our school and outside of our school. 
um, high expectations. I'm going to set the bar up here, and guess what? You're going to exceed because every kid wants to meet your expectations. Teacher attitude and responsibility. I'm responsible for my attitude, and I'm, responsi I'm responsible for my teacher knowledge and my skill. And that's my job. You hire me to do a specific job and have the knowledge to do that job, and I have to make sure that I am in tune with my attitude when I walk in that building every day, and I have to make sure that I'm responsible for my skill, and I'm up to date on my skill. Um, those tenets, those beliefs that we believe in guide, they are guide, further guided by the 17 classroom practices. Those practices um, integrate life principles like honesty, integrity, responsibility, respect, self-discipline. Once again, that one kid that I've already encountered helped self-discipline himself. We discussed, I redirected, he told me what he needed to do to fix his problem. He took care of his problem. He self-disciplined. He self-directed himself. Um, great expectations is a methodology. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of teaching. It is no longer, you'll see the what to teaching. What am I going to teach today? It's the how am I going to teach. And when I said that it energizes teachers, I'm telling you, when I entered that four-day conference, I thought to myself, four days. From 8 to 4.30, are you kidding me? When I left there, I was like, I'm ready to go. Give me my key to my room. I'm ready to go. I want to teach my kids. Bring me my kids. I want to share my information with my kids. Um, the tenets and the practices assist the students in becoming self-directed learners, which they have a real hard time with that right now, uh, becoming um, productive citizens, Effective communicators. How many of you have spoken with a student that can't even look you in the eye? How many of you have spoken with an 18-year-old that graduated and can't look you in the eye? Um, they are, it helps them to become critical thinkers. They can't think anymore because technology does it for them. So we have to teach them how to become critical thinkers. And most importantly, cooperative contributors to the classroom as well as society. Once again, we're teaching them how to behave, not only in our classrooms, but outside the classroom, because that's what we're responsible for. That's what our job is, not just with our own personal kids, but beyond our classroom doors, on the school door, how do we behave outside of our community? How do we become productive citizens? Those six tenets, beliefs, and those 17 practices are taught to teachers, administrators, principals, superintendents. It's all taught to you basically like riding a bicycle. Another quote that um, the uh, Great Expectations uses is, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep going. I don't know how many of you are riding bicycles. Um, I still can keep my balance on one, but if you're not pedaling, which means moving forward, you're going to fall off that bicycle. When you are a learner, in the classroom and an educator, the proper way your learner should be on top, your educator on bottom, and vice versa. If you're moving forward, those roles are always switching because you're changing places. You're teaching, they're teaching, you're guiding, they're guiding. They're guiding one another, they're guiding you, you're guiding them, they're guiding each other. 